as far as I'm a strong believer in epish bull in AMC on the short squeeze and beyond the short squeeze, you know, outside of the short squeeze, um, I do believe there is a chance, there is a probability that AMC can never squeeze. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that it won't ever squeeze again, all right? I'm trying to say that life, it's not wonderland. This is not wonderland. We live in real life. And the last eight, 11 months proved that pretty well, <laughs> that we live in real life. And because we're really in real life, we have to look at things with two type of lenses. As there are two sides of any story, there are also two sides of any coin. So even if that chance of AMC never squeezing, it's 0.0000000001% is still a chance that exists. And I have to include that in my analysis, in my DD, in my research, right? So I share with you already so far, you know, this week and last week, how the suits are increasing the, the bullish bet calls stocks they are adding to the position and so far this quarter we are on a what 95 percent five percent ninety percent you know buys and only maybe three percent or 98 three 98 two so it gives you that compared to the first quarter where we had one billion and four hundred you know so what 40 48 50 percent of people who i mean were selling based on people who buy who bought um, things are changing a little bit and this is because personally I believe that these suits like shark smell blood in the water they come right to it you know they just pulled into it so that is a strong indicator that even if the suits especially people who are considered to be the smartest investors in the world are adding to their positions here in AMC um, to me that's a confirmation or a confirmation bias if you will all right now if AMC doesn't quiz, let's just imagine for a second that the the, 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 the short sellers, the hedges, you know, drag this indefinitely because they have connections, because they are in collusion with, you know, Robin Hood, the government, whatever, or just because, you know, they are too proud to let the world see that dumb money retailers finally beat them at their own games. All right, let's just imagine for a second that for some reason, they pull it away and this just continue to trade sideways, maybe for 40, 50s, maybe 80s at some point. I don't know. All right. Now, what should you do? Because that's the biggest question. Personally, I think AMC outside of the short squeeze, besides the short squeeze theory and the short squeeze catalyst is a pretty strong case for a bullish company because when you look at what the management around Adam Aaron have been doing for the last what six months in terms of thinking outside the box to put this company where not only it was gonna thrive but not survive but thrive and actually be ahead because AMC is not only anymore just about movie theaters it's really embracing the whole entertainment concept you know and it's trying to move ahead where crypto you know the next trend even metaverse for example where you could talk about the nfc's and everything um amc can actually benefit a lot from that and that's why when you look at the share price of um the value the real value of amc this is an article I stumbled upon on Investor Place. AMC is set to return to a free cash flow profitability and could rise to $52. So this is not the first time such analysis has been made on the AMC case where when you look at the free cash flow, the FCF, looking meaning you look at how much money the company is expect, expected to start making next year. You take that money and you kind of what we do, a discount. So you kind of take that money and you actually give them a value, give it a value according to today. This is what we call the present value of money or the present value of cash flow. So you take that in and you try to assign all the expenses, all the charges, all the money they expend, your know, salaries, your rents, and everything, plus some growth where the market is going, where the interest rates are sitting, it comes with you know what we call a, 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 a value of the company. So now they are saying if if AMC only 
return to free cash flow, not giving an excess amount of that free cash flow, it can still it still could rise to $52. So $52 is what 22% more than where the stock is actually sitting today at 41 after hours. All right. Now, what it doesn't say, but there was another article that was published, I think, what, a couple of months ago, where if you consider AMC to have two, no, three billion, 2.8 billion worth of free cash flow next year, all right, um, which, by the way, it's not totally impossible given all the revenue streams they are positioning themselves to start be making, the value then will be strongly going to 80 bucks a share. This is without additional buying pressure. This is without the show squeeze happening. This is without all the all this whole thing about short risk happening here. So outside of this, just looking at what the company is doing and will do so far next year, all right? So it gives, it, it, it lends you to 80 bucks a share. So let me ask you this. If AMC doesn't squeeze and can still give you 22% upside on the money you're making now, isn't it not worth keeping it in your portfolio just to be, a return to normal play because AMC has always been that to me personally. All right. Now, keep in mind, I'm not including here the fear of missing out because whether you want to believe it or no, any spike into AMC will attract FOMO. I'm not keeping here into consideration any dividend being paid because another dividend being paid will just crush some of the I mean, attract some of the value and passive income seeking investors into the play, adding again to the buying pressure. All right. So that brings us all the way to maybe, I don't know, from 50 to 80 bucks a share or maybe from 50 to 100 bucks a share. Now, if if we get to that point without even a short squeeze, remember to short a stock, you need to borrow shares and you need to pay interest on those shares you are borrowing, meaning you are also paying a lot of money shorting the stock. Those are the edges. All right. So when it comes to when it gets to that 50, I mean, 60, 80, 100 bucks a share, I guarantee you some of those shorts will definitely be crushed because it will be unbearable for them at that point, especially if the market is supposed to pull back. That being said, if that happens, they're talking about close position on short, all right? Meaning they have to start buying to cover those short positions. And when the little short sellers, the little hedges are getting out of the play, you're talking about gamma squeeze. So again, my bottom line, you get here. You get what I'm going with this here. Even without a short squeeze play in the next, what, year or so, there is still a strong chance for AMC squeezing. So I guess it's a no brainer for me if it doesn't squeeze or never squeeze because ultimately it is already poised to squeeze. It's just a matter of time, but I guess you already know it.